everyone. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. So energy wise, what's it feeling like for you? I know it's been a lot of weird weather. This has been really interesting because um, I have been continuously in contact with the Arcturian Council. They come through in my spirit circle sessions and apparently I'm also working with them when I'm sleeping. That's what they told me. So uh, as they come through, they're talking about the weather last time and talking about natural weather versus modified weather. So we're seeing some cross contamination of what's naturally happening and some modified weather. So you might be experiencing that where you are and what they wanted you to know is that you can use your energy to radiate, radiate warmth and vaporize any weather modification. That's just unnatural weather that's not supposed to be happening, but that's being manipulated on the planet. And so what you can do is imagine yourself in a beautiful golden shell of light. Imagine it like an egg around your body, totally covering you. And this is the light of Christ consciousness. And as you're feeling this energy, you'll notice it gives off some radiation, like, um, you know, how the sun's rays come off of it. Well, this light also radiates. And the more you feel that warmth and project that warmth, you extend these rays. And as you extend them out, you help to vaporize anything that is not naturally occurring. So if you happen to notice this in your area or you feel it in your gut that that might be happening, you can use that little exercise that they gave us to help to clear away anything that's not supposed to be there and allow nature to run her course. So energy wise, we have a big movement coming up on Saturday and that is Pluto moving into the sign of Aquarius. Now Pluto is a slow moving planet and it changes signs, gosh, I want to say every 10 to 12 years, maybe even longer than that. Actually, it takes about 15 to 28 years for Pluto to move through the zodiac signs and 248 years for it to go all the way around the wheel. So wherever Pluto is in our lifetime, as it moves, it's the only time we're ever going to see it move through that sign during our lifetime. Now, Pluto has been in, in and out of Capricorn. It actually touched into Aquarius last year. So when it moves through its retrogrades, if it's near the beginning or the ending of the degrees, it can move back and forth through the signs. So what we're having now is on the 20th of January, Pluto will move into the sign of Aquarius, which just happens to be the sign that represents the new age we're moving into, the age of Aquarius. And it's going to be there all the, through most of this year until it retrogrades back into Capricorn. And then I believe it's fully into Aquarius in 2025, and there it will stay. Pluto is a planet that represents power and transformation, and it often helps us do this by either empowering what's working or purging what's not working. And so as we're moving into the sign of Aquarius, this will be representing the future and the direction we're meant to go. Um, and depending on if the systems that we're working with are oriented to our future highest good, then they will be empowered. Those systems will be empowered. And any system that is not in alignment with the highest good or where we're going as a species for the future will be purged to be either broken down completely or at least broken down so that they can be restructured into something that's more in alignment with the direction that we're heading in. So we're going to be seeing this planet move on Saturday. And we can look at it on the global level and, and kind of see that bigger picture, right? That's sort of a revolutionary energy if you think about it. Um, apparently, the last time it was in Aquarius was towards the end of the 1700s. And we all know that there was a lot of upheaval around that time as revolution was happening in the world. But we can also see the internal revolution that is happening. And that is it's empowering what is most aligned with your future and where you are heading as a being 
and going to help you release those things that are no longer in alignment, that are too archaic in your life, or don't actually match where you're going. So your future self, if you will. This also makes sense when you think about it in terms of ascension, right? We're always talking, when we're talking about ascension, about moving into the new earth. And so there are certain qualities, as my team have pointed out time and time again, that just are not a match for this higher vibrational frequencies. And those are the things that we might be noticing coming up and out. It's almost like a blackhead, right? Like it's going to be purged out of the system because it's not part of who you are and it's not even necessary to go with you. So a lot of our lower 3D behaviors or attitudes or patterns that we still have, if they're there, they're going to be purged are going to be transformed so that you can be more in alignment with your authentic soul self. And that's the expanded consciousness version of you. Now, here's the thing. You've already been doing this work for a while now. This has been happening. You are a masterpiece well underway. And the team has a message for you this week that it is time to really celebrate how far you've come because maybe you are really focused on who you're becoming or the alignment that you want to create for yourself. Maybe you're sort of seeing the future version or what you'd like to experience. And a lot of times when we're focused on that, we can feel like it's very far away. And my team has a message for you that you are closer than you think. This is the messaging I've been getting not only from my personal team, but also from the Arcturian Council. We are closer than you think, and it is okay to celebrate now. In fact, I was just doing the Shining the Light on podcast with Amber today. That'll come out on my channel uh, in a few days here, and you'll get to hear it for yourself. But in that... We were asking, are there you know, any events that are coming up in January at the end that we want to look at? And the team was talking about a completion process and a celebration. And so this is something they really want you to understand is that it's okay to see your growth and celebrate it now. In fact, that's only going to help you. It's going to be the perfect time to celebrate it, especially if we're hitting, if you're watching this just on the 20th or around there, that's a perfect day to celebrate because part of what's happening with that Pluto transition into Aquarius is empowerment. So celebrating what's working. So let's think about, I'm going to give you a few ideas of things that you can think about to celebrate now. You might have one of these, you might have all of these, but you definitely have something here to celebrate. So examples of this might be breaking a long held habit, a pattern that you've noticed, and finally stepping into taking action, breaking that down. Perhaps you have a completion to celebrate, like perhaps you have reached a goal, a goal that you've been working toward for a while, or maybe you found clarity towards what you wanted to move towards and you finally have that in your grasp. Maybe it's a new sense of self that you fought really hard to earn. So remember, we've, we've been talking these past few karma cards about that future self and getting into alignment with it. Maybe you're already starting to do that. Maybe it's clicked and you're starting to express that version of yourself now. Perhaps you've made progress in a relationship where you found a new way to come together and maybe address things in a different manner than you have in the past, creating more cohesion and harmony in your relationship. Maybe you found your voice and are able to speak your truth. There are so many different ways that you have grown. And a lot of times what happens when we hit these growth points is we're like, good, I finally caught up. And then we keep going. And the team wants you to know that take a moment, pause and celebrate, celebrate, acknowledge the growth that you've had. No growth is too small. And those even small little bits of growth are the seeds of who you are becoming. They are the seeds that will develop into the next version of you. And there's just so much that you've planted that's already coming to pass and it's time to take stock and notice it. So what they're asking for you to do is write it down. So I want you to think about the list of things that I gave you as a starting point. 
Did any of those resonate for you? If they did, pause this video, find a piece of paper, write it down and continue to look. What other patterns have changed? Have you like something as simple as, for example, it's been a couple years, like a year, two years. Gosh, I think it's at least been a year and a half, if not two years. Um, I stopped drinking coffee, which wasn't something that was like at the time I was drinking coffee. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. So it wasn't like, a oh, I can't believe I, I keep drinking coffee. No, I really enjoyed it. But my body did not. My adrenals did not enjoy the caffeine. And I remember at the time being asked to consider stopping and that feeling like a challenge for me. And now it's been almost two years and I haven't looked back. I have my morning cup of Dandy Blend. If you guys know what that is, if you know, you know. And if you want to know, you should go check it out on Amazon. Dandy Blend, all one word. Uh, it's basically dandelion root a kind of coffee substitute. It's really good for your liver, can taste like coffee, acts like coffee, but has none of the bad side effects and is actually quite good at helping your body detoxify. So I have that every morning now and in my brain, I call it coffee. But that is something huge to celebrate because the caffeine was really wreaking havoc on my body and I managed to flush it out and not look back, like haven't missed it even for a second and even when I have the opportunity to have coffee I'm like nah no thanks that's huge to me and I remember I didn't really take a moment to be like wow I did it like I was excited that I could do it but I just kept moving on it's those little tiny things that we still want to celebrate they still count and the reason why is it shows a commitment to yourself on some level right I committed to a good habit. I am able to adapt and change. I am able to grow. And every time we take a moment to acknowledge that, we are re-empowering ourselves to do it again. So even if there's something else that you're working towards that you want to change or develop in yourself, when you acknowledge you've already done it before, you're making it so much easier to do it again. And so if you haven't, take time, write down the wins, what's changing for you, how are you handling things differently, and acknowledge your growth because you are so close to this major transformation point and you're already there. Like there's a part of you who's ready to go and any parts that need help transforming, well, all they need is encouragement from you that they can transform and they will transform so much easier. And with that, let's check out this week's karma cards all right if you're new to karma cards let me quickly tell you how these work i have three decks here planets signs of the zodiac and the houses of astrology and i've already asked my team what's the message you have for us this week and i got two sets of answers a set in red which are action related and a set in blue which are outcome related and the way that you play is you tune in with that beautiful intuition of yours and feel what is the guidance you need this week? Are you looking for aligned actions to take or are you looking to see how things will resolve? And of course, you can always choose both. I suspect a lot of people choose both. I choose both most of the time, uh, but you can always do that. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This is for January 17th through the 24th and the flavor of this reading. All right, we've got Mercury here. So we know we got some thinking to do because this is going to be all about our thought process and how we're going to express that. A lot of times in words, words and writing is how Mercury shows up. Now, this is where it gets fun because we've got Leo again. We had Leo last week. So this is about, you know, leadership and owning it and standing in your power in the first house again. We've been getting this all January. The last two um, karma cards have been first house. So we know this is about how we're viewing ourselves and how we're expressing ourselves and how that's reflecting back to us. We know that's part of it. These two cards were in the last karma cards reading. So we are being inundated with this message about standing in our power, um, aligning to our sovereign self and reflecting that back out into the world. They are really hitting us with this. So let's hear what this week's message is. Spiritual action at this time is to communicate leadership 
immediately. I think this is interesting, especially when you tie it into the message that the team had, because I was talking about counting your wins. And that is something that is part of being a leader. So part of being a good leader is to be able to acknowledge not only what needs work, but what's working. And I feel like they're letting us know this is something we need to do immediately, right? So communicate leadership immediately. Acknowledge what's working. Praise the team. If like, for example, if one of the things that's working is there's better communication, uh, better intimacy or, or better relations between people, communicate that to yourself, but acknowledge it with them too, right? Like that's what a leader would do is they would find something to praise about what is working because the leader would know that that's going to create more of it, right? So we're, when we're being acknowledged for what's working, we want to do more of it. You got to think about how praise works, right? So um, that positive praise reinforces the positive behavior. And we often think about it when we're communicating with other people, especially children, we tend to think in that way. But we rarely ever, I mean, some people might. I, I, my brain has not been trained to think about positive reinforcement towards myself because I'm one of those people who's like always driven by growth, right? And you might be too, where it's just like, I'm, I wanna grow, I wanna expand. Any way I can get better, I wanna be better. But we want to make sure that we're balancing that with that positive reinforcement, that good job, the, the, the kudo, the attaboy, right? We wanna make sure we're giving ourselves that. And that's part of that, um, that's part of the mindset that we want to be in, especially as we're moving through the vibrations of love, which is fourth density, and up into the vibrations of wisdom, which is fifth density. We will be acknowledging this more. This is the way forward. This is how we get the best results out of ourselves as well as out of others is through that positive reinforcement. And they're asking us to do that for ourselves now and then share it with those that it would also benefit mental action at this time analyze the creativeness of the way that you project yourself okay so what they're showing me here is that they actually want you to do this analyzation about how do you project yourself in your mind how are you seeing yourself in your mind again kind of going back to the last statement about growth if you see yourself as someone who like if you are encouraged or inspired by growing when you close your eyes and you visualize yourself, do you see yourself as there? Or do you see yourself as someone who constantly needs to grow? Like, are you ever the master in your mind? Or are you always the student? Do you know what I mean? Like, is it always like you're a perpetual project? That's never quite right. And you got to get there? Or are you like, yeah, I've actualized that. So take some time to look at that and look at it in many areas, because there might be some areas where you're like, actually, I have mastery here, I actually see that I've done a good job. I've, I'm behind myself on this and I recognize my accomplishment. But in other areas, you might feel like, yeah, I'm way behind. Like I just keep trying to get it and I haven't quite gotten it. So this is sort of a project that might go with the writing where you stop in for a moment and you look at like, how do I see my relationship with money? And you might write down some things that that you're seeing or you might just acknowledge yeah I, I finally feel like I've mastered this or I feel like I'm always trying to catch up to a version of myself I want to be write down any ways that you have grown when it comes to that topic right so you can see you can go through this exercise in many topics but it's this they're particularly focusing on how you're viewing yourself in your mind because we, we have a comment, a running commentary going on in the background. We're not always conscious of it, but we're always projecting this vision. It's almost like, you know, we're, we're, we're the projector, there's a screen and we're seeing ourselves in our mind's eye as I'm still work, I'm a work in progress or I'm way behind or oh, no, I've got this. So it's time to check in more specifically and get clear on what is that. And I feel like the creativeness part of this is how I'm asking you to try this exercise by taking a moment to let it play, look at it, and then get information about how you're viewing yourself there 
and then see if you can spot any wins because I bet you there is some wins even if you're not like at mastery that's okay how have you grown how have you gotten better how have there's always something there that you can find as a win even if that win is self-awareness that's still a win physical action at this time let your mind tell you how to do what you want and do it your own way so this is interesting because they're sort of piggybacking off the last statement again and they're saying here um okay as you're watching that version of yourself and you're trying to identify how i'm projecting myself and you're also looking for how have i grown or where's a win here um they're letting you know that play with that image now now that you've done that work where you viewed it, you've looked for the growth or the win, now how would you adjust that? Is it, do you already have it nailed in? Is it perfect? Or are you wanting to look at that like you're like, oh, and I'm looking at me and money and I'm seeing that insecurity. I feel like that means that I'm behind or I'm a student. What would it look like if I pulled that out? Who would I be with money if I didn't have this insecurity here? Do I like the way that feels and looks? Do I feel like I can authentically walk into that, step step into that role? And if not, why am I holding on to the insecurity? What does that mean? And you, you're going to get a whole bunch of information out of this. But by having this moment where we're sort of like breaking down what we see and again it's not judgment right we're not going to look at it and blame it or feel bad about what we see even if we're seeing something that feels lacking we're going to let that go and we're going to look at this more analytically we're going to use that mercury mind which can you know it can detach from emotion which you need here because this is not about right or wrong good or bad this is about awareness and what am I projecting because if I'm projecting it up in here I'm projecting it out into the world right so as we get awareness of that and then we can see something it's like oh yeah I, I do walk around with that or I feel okay until I get into a certain situation where maybe someone around me is showing me that they are really secure with money and then suddenly I feel that shaky or uneasy feeling i want to pay attention to that and i want to acknowledge that i'm being shown something here i'm being shown another approach and i can actually take that insecurity out and and learn from the one who's showing me what stability or security looks like and model and model that to me so that i can then visualize myself holding that kind of energy Right, so this is an opportunity for us to play with it. There's no right way to do it, which is why it says do, you know, it says um, do it your own way. You feeling secure around a situation might look very different than someone else and how they feel secure. But recognizing whether you're holding a grounded, secure energy or an insecure, unstable energy is something that's very important to you and allows you to ask questions and make changes around that simply by observing it. All right, now let's look at outcomes for Mercury in Leo in the first house of self-expression. The spiritual outcome at this time is the awareness of self-confidence to create who you are. This is exactly what they've been saying. It's that awareness of what I'm projecting to myself is what is being projected out. And as soon as you can look at yourself, as soon as you're having this internal, um, they just keep showing me this projection onto a screen. So it's like internal movie time where you're simply watching how do I feel about myself in this situation in, in regards to this subject, in this context, how do I see myself? It's going to help you know what you're projecting out in the world. That's going to give you the awareness. And awareness is such a gift because as soon as you have awareness, you can move into some choices, right? Awareness means it can lead to acceptance. Okay, I do that. It's the okay, I see it now. I accept that. I'm walking around holding this shaky energy in this particular area of my life. I can see that. The minute you have that, that acceptance, now you can change it. And so this is really this beautiful period for you to really review how you're projecting yourself out, right? That energy that's going out. Because as you see it, you might go, you know, um, 
I never liked this topic or I never liked being in this situation because I always feel unsure of myself here. Now imagine that you could take that unsureness or the insecurity out and watch, right? Insecurity is just the kind of the thing that keeps popping up, mostly because we're dealing with the first house here and that's where I feel like being secure in ourself lives as well as in Leo. Leo is very much about self-esteem. Uh, but there is this knowing yourself that gives you security. Even if what you know is I have work to do here, that still gives you security, which will increase your confidence because having that awareness, knowing yourself is such a powerful state that even if it is, hey, I got some work to do here, there's security in that because you know what you need to do next. You've got clarity. Mental outcome at this time. Many thoughts of or about taking a chance on your desires. You know, whenever I'm doing these and I'm feeling into talking to you, I feel like I can feel, I feel people responding already, even though I'm talking technically to myself right now, <laughs> I can still feel people responding. And so I feel a lot of positive energy coming off of this as I'm talking to you. Like I feel like the majority of you listening are really going to like want to grab onto this and be like, let me try it. Let me give this a shot. I also feel that little bit of like, Sounds nice, Therese, but I'm not sure that's going to work. Like I just, I don't see how visualizing myself and pulling these things out of me could give me the opportunity to create that change in my real life. I feel like it's still in my head. I'm going to say to you, you're right. It is in your head. But do you understand like everything's consciousness? Everything's a frequency. It all starts with consciousness. And I know that you know that. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that Consciousness is a really important part of this. Intent is everything according to energy because the intent shows you where to send the energy. It's like my intention to turn right sends my energy to the right, right? So we've got to remind ourselves that yes, you're doing this in your mind first. And I'm asking you to notice yourself, how you're projecting yourself to your mind. And imagine you could pull these these pieces out that you feel are like holding you back. It's as simple as like plucking it off of yourself and watching yourself behave in a different way. And so oh, what I feel about that is that sometimes we're afraid to take this chance or even just to play with this thinking, what if it doesn't do anything? That thought right there isn't a constructive thought because it's like, well, you've tried. You've tried this. Um, you, you've tried trying to figure out on your own, or you've also tried confusion. Confusion is also a choice here. This is an exercise that brings you clarity. It gives you a chance to, it's like a dressing room in a way. It gives you a chance to try something on. What if I wasn't so scared about losing my money? What if I wasn't so afraid about speaking up for myself? What if I had the courage to go after that big goal and I wasn't afraid of failing? We often think we have to do this in real life first. You get a dress rehearsal. You get to dry run this. You get to give it a try in your own mind and feel it out. This is what you're giving yourself. And the beautiful thing about doing it this way is that your brain doesn't know the difference between you trying it in, on in your mind and it happening in real life. The same centers light up, whether you're visualizing it, which is technically what this exercise is, or if you're doing it. So you win twice. One time you win because it's like the free trial version, right? There's no there's no messing it up. You can pluck out that uh, the fear of being seen instantly and there's no one gonna see you because it's in your own mind, right? So you get the trial run, the free version. You get to test drive it and it's safe and easy, but you get the other win of it lighting up as if you did it, which means as soon as you do it, your brain's going to go, I know how to do that and can do it. So you win twice. So it's worth it, right? It does make a difference. And not only that, it gives you a chance to play and practice, which we know practice means progress. Physical outcome at this time, many words resulting from the impressiveness of your action. 
So like I said, this exercise that they keep elaborating on in these karma cards is definitely going to give you the list, right? It's going to show you the winning list, the list of how you've grown. Those, Even as we're looking at ourselves, even as we're seeing something that we would still like to change, we're still going to find the wins. Even if the win is I practiced, I did it, I showed up, I did the the, you know, the dress rehearsal in my mind, I get to write that down. And I'm not kidding, write it down. It all counts because it's all an effort to move in the direction of your desires. And as you're doing that, as you're moving in that direction, you are aligning to yourself. So our our desires are connected to something deeper within ourselves. Now, there are different types of desire that we could go into, right? There is the lower desires, and then there's the purified desires. But a lot of times growth kind of falls in that category of purified desire. So wanting to expand yourself into a higher version of yourself is the purified desire versus I want lots of money, or I want lots of sex, or I want lots of things, right? These are would be considered lower desires. And it's not that you can't have those things, but when what we're really working towards here is we're visualizing how we're projecting ourselves and we're looking at how we wish to grow, who we desire to grow into. So as you help yourself in this process, discover what you're projecting, how you would shift it, how you're winning, you're helping yourself practice to do it and you are encouraging the better parts of yourself to repeat and come forward because they're being seen and acknowledged by you. So this is definitely a time of um, working with that projection of yourself and really embracing what you see and seeing all of it, whatever's presenting to you as a stepping stone to that higher version of yourself. It's a beautiful period of time and I hope that you're celebrating yourself. I'm celebrating you because I know, I know, I know, I know that you've had something to celebrate and some major wins here. And I'm just wishing more and more of those for you. So with that, I'm giving you a big kiss and I will see you at the next Karma Cards.